Hello and welcome to this Ultra Edit Masterclass on handling large files with ease. Um, we are starting the webinar. We're going to give it a minute, maybe a minute and a half more for more attendees to come in. We see the attendee account count going up here, so uh, we'll give it a couple more moments and then dive into our content. Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and get started here. Again, you are in the Ultra Edit Masterclass webinar for handling large files. Um, a recorded version of this webinar will be available. So if you need to drop early or have problems with audio or video, um, you will be able to review the webinar in its entirety um, after we are done. Uh, my name is Ben Schwenk. I am Chief of Staff for Ultra Edit, and I am joined by my coworker Bradley Hawkins, who is our product manager and a C++ programmer extraordinaire. Um, we're both excited to be able to go over Ultra Edit's large file handling uh, capabilities with you. And we'd also like to hear from you. So if at any point during this webinar, you have any questions regarding the content that we're covering, please go over to the question box and type in your question. We'll do our best to answer it. Um, if we aren't able to answer it at the Q&A portion at the end of the webinar, we'll try to answer it directly in the question box. Um, if you have any questions that are maybe more feature request related or you're experiencing an issue or something with the product, please reach out to us directly um, at support at ultraedit.com. We have a fully staffed support team that is waiting on your email and will get you a quick response to help you with that. Um, so please don't use the question box for um, support issues or that sort of thing. We'll be happy to help you with that outside of the web. All right, again, welcome to everyone. Uh, we appreciate your time and we're going to go ahead and dive into our content on working with large files. And Bradley is going to kick things off here. Thanks, Ben, for that intro. Uh, hello, I, this is uh, Bradley Hawkins, uh, product manager for Ultra Edit. And we're gonna be, as Ben has said, we're gonna be tackling large files and how Ultra Edit uh, handle those today. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna discuss really kind of uh, uh, how large files came to be a core feature of Ultra Edit and uh, what exactly that means, give you just a little brief technical overview. Uh, Ultra Edit, as, as many of you may know or may not know, Ultra Edit has been around for a while. The, the, the first versions of Ultra Edit were actually uh, uh, for Windows 3.1, so it was a 16-bit environment, and uh, then it's progressed all the way up now to Windows 11, you know, it's fully 64-bit application. But be, because of some of the constraints historically, uh, one of the one of the main focuses of the of, of the creator of Ultra Edit, Ian Mead, was to enable file handling beyond what you could have in memory. And uh, so Ultra Edit, what Ultra Edit does is uh, when we load files, we don't load the entire file if it's not a small file. We don't load the entire file. We load a portion of the file, and the rest of the file remains on disk. And we have uh, what I would describe as a sliding window that allows you to move over the file and it makes changes to both on disk and in memory and synchronizes that. So what that lets us do though, is handle files that are significantly larger than whatever your available memory is. That segmented data handling allows us to uh, handle, you know, files that are gigabytes, terabytes of size, and to do, do so fairly efficiently and quickly. And uh, as I said, that's, been a, that's a core feature of Ultra Edit and one that we've maintained all the way from the, as I said, the old days of 16-bit all the way up now to 64-bit. So uh, it, it's really become a, a, a staple uh, feature for many of our users, and we're gonna get into some details on that. Uh, we're gonna actually have a, 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 a go through how to optimize Ultra Edit to do large file handling, 
and then Ben's going to explain some scenarios where that applies, then we're going to cover some real-world examples, and then we'll finally look toward the future of what we're going to look at for Ultra Edit for large file handling and Ultra Edit generally. That kind of gives you a, a synopsis of where we're going for the entire webinar. So first we're going to look at optimizing for large file handling, and we have a, a short video that will just walk you through how you would set up Ultra Edit to do large file handling. And I'm going to switch over to that now. To fully optimize Ultra Edit for large file handling, several settings need to be modified. I'm going to cover those now and indicate the correct values for each. So let's uh, go to Advanced, Settings, and here we're going to go to File Handling, and DOS Unix Mac Handling. And here we're going to make sure that never prompt to convert files to DOS format is selected. And then we're going to go to file handling, temporary files. And we're going to select open file without temp file, but no prompt. And then for threshold for above, we're going to set a reasonably large value, like 50,000, which is a approximately on the order of 50 megabytes. So all files over 50 megabytes will not use a temp file. Now we're going to go to editor display, code folding, and we're going to uncheck enable show hide lines and code folding. And then we're going to go to editor display, line change indicator, and uncheck enable line change indicator. And then Editor Display, Miscellaneous, and check Disable Line Numbers. And then finally for Editor Display, we're going to click on Syntax Highlighting, and uncheck Enable Syntax Coloring. Now we're going to go to, under Settings, to the XML Manager Settings. And we're going to make sure that auto parse XML documents less than is checked and that a reasonable value and the default is 20 megabytes, which means only files less than 20 megabytes will be automatically parsed by our XML manager. And now we're going to close settings. We're going to go to layout and we're going to make sure that the function list is not visible not checked, and not auto-hidden. And that uh, is actually all the settings we need to modify for large file handling. And you are now ready to go directly to uh, editing. Thanks for that, Brad. Um, I, one thing that I want to point out is that those are those settings that he disabled are like the extreme, like worst case scenario for modifying large files in Ultra Edit. Out of the box, we've already got optimizations to uh, make large file handling, large file editing very smooth, fast, and efficient. Um, and in fact, you'll see that here in a moment without having to manually modify those settings. Those are obviously the settings that can only help and improve and you know make make things perhaps screaming fast in Ultra Edit when you're working with large files. Uh, so I just wanted to quickly demonstrate, I've got a, uh, let me share my screen here. Okay, so I have a 700 megabyte XML file here, and I'm just going to drop this right into Ultra Edit. You might not have been able to see my screen there. There's a different window I was outside in Explorer, but basically this is a protein sequence database of a bunch of different species of animals. I found it online somewhere. But as you can see, uh, it opens right away. There's no delay in opening this file. There's no delay in syntax highlighting it. Um, you don't have to sit here waiting for a syntax highlighting thread to parse through the file, the entire file to get syntax highlighting. 
And navigation through the file is gonna be very quick as well. So I'm gonna hit Control End. And as you can see, I'm at the end of this file, Control Home back at the beginning. Navigation with um, the uh, curse, or I'm sorry, the scroll bar, or even the document document map is very fast. And that's really credit to our team in doing a lot of work behind the scenes to optimize that file window, that internal file window that Brad referenced at the beginning of the webinar, uh, to be able to move around to different places in the file that quickly without actually having the entire file open. Uh, searching is going to be just as fast in a large file as it would be in a mid-size or smaller file. So you can see that I've been doing some previous searches here, but if I search for squirrel, jump through all of the occurrences with no delay whatsoever. Um, editing is not a problem in large files. Uh, inserting new lines, that can be cumbersome or tricky, but again, this has all been optimized. Opening up a comment doesn't cause any delays. Uh, again, just fantastic performance uh, for a file of this size. Now, um, one thing that may be, um, that, that you may find yourself doing is doing a replace in a large file. And while you can certainly do that, it's going to take uh, a little bit of time because UltraEdit does have to go through and calculate some information in regards to uh, line numbers, undo chain, that sort of thing, um, updating the view with the new text or whatever. So one trick that when I was working in support uh, that I like to share with our customers who are working with large files is if you're fairly confident in the replace that you're doing, you can actually do a replace in files instead. Uh, and a replace in files is going to go directly into the file on disk, and it's going to uh, repl replace all occurrences directly on disk without actually opening the file. So that does mean that the edits or the modifications are permanent. Uh, so if you're not sure, definitely don't do this, uh, but if you are sure, then it's a great time-saving way. So, for example, um, I have in this same folder this file called nwik8, which is a wiki dump of uh, some meta information from the English version of Wikipedia. So, let's say that I want to replace uh, revision, all occurrences of revision, with rev. Um, I'm just going to check my settings here. This stuff doesn't matter. All I have to do to do this is set the directory to the parent directory of the file. And in files types, I'm just going to enter the name of the file itself rather than star.star .star or star.html or whatever. And that will limit the scope of this replacing files into only this single file. So I'll do the replace all. I'm going to get a prompt. Uh, that's warning me about this permanent uh, operation, I'm sure, so I'm going to click yes. And then as you can see here, uh, over 40,000 replacements in the matter of, you know, a second or two. So, yeah, that's some demo of, some demos of editing, modifying large files. As you can see, uh, it's highly, highly performant, highly responsive, ultra edit, you know, this is its bread and butter. And so we've done a lot of work to make it this way. Um, and we hope that you get as much out of it as we've put into it. So with that said, I will hand this back over to Brad to continue uh, with the next section of our webinar. All right, thank you, Ben, for that. Let's uh, uh, move on to, uh, we're gonna speak briefly about the data types. This comes up with the large files the most. Um, we just got these presented here, a, a SQL, XML, CSV, JSON, text, just regular text files. We, we see a lot of, of these types of files where users will send us that are hundreds of megabytes, gigabytes, 
uh, e even terabytes. Uh, we've seen some of those. And um, this is the range what we normally see, but I thought this would be a good opportunity for anyone who is working with large files on a regular basis that you might want to send us you know, what are you using our large file handling for or what do you think you might use our large file handling for because these file types here are the ones that we've focused on because we know these are what users are using this is what they've sent us and so you know this is where we do our testing with large file handling so this is an opportunity for anyone who's uh, participating in the webinar uh, to you know let us know what types of large files are you using what types of large files would you like ultra edit to have more capabilities with so <clears throat> And uh, now, now we're gonna we're gonna get into a couple of a uh, couple of examples beyond what Ben showed. Some specific examples of hey, this is how you can use Ultra Edit to do more with large files. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna I'm going to showcase is uh, you have a large file, but perhaps you'd like to not just focus on editing a large file, but do something more with it to make it more manageable. So I'm going to switch over to And what I've got here is I've got a large data file. It's it's uh, about 100 megabytes, and it's a, a lot of settings data uh, for for our applications. And it's just you know, it's just line after line and line after data. And if I was trying to go through and look at this, this could be a, a little intimidating. So we have a script that we can run that will just take this file. Got through. This was provided by uh, 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 one of our users. And uh, it actually does a great job at this. And you can just specify, say you want to specify how many lines it has, whether you'd like for it to have a header. And then you can just run this script. And it will take the large data file and break it out into smaller data files. And you can see that each one of these has been broken out individually. And that the header has been perpetuated, so I've got the header data, so it gives me some context. And this is just well, one way you can take large files, use a simple script, modify your data, and have something that's a lot easier to work with. Uh, the uh, next case I'm going to look at, let me switch over to that, is let's say I've got uh, this is here is a SQL file. And I've actually had to do this myself, where we were migrating uh, all of our existing customer issue database, all the issues from that database to a different format. And I needed to be able to break it out by table. So we have, again, a script. It's relatively simple here. You can just take this script, take an SQL file. You can run the script, and it will break out each individual table and all associated data, all associated data with the table to separate files. To make it again a little easier to work with or to move or manipulate those tables separately from the database aggregate. So I can just run this script. And then I can show that I've got the individual database tables. You know, each there was three tables, one for city, one for country one for languages, and it's broken out each one individually along with all the associated data. Again, just using a, a simple JavaScript, using our scripting capability, and now I've taken a, a larger database file and made it a lot more manageable. So let's... Uh... I'm going to switch back over to Ben. Ben, you've got uh, something to show us uh, working with large XML files. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Brad. Um, yeah, so as I uh, switch over to my screen here again, um, I wanted to share with our audience um, <clears throat> something that we had done for um, a customer. So here I've got, this is a uh, somewhat of a smaller XML file, but it's still pretty large. I think around 100 megabytes or so. And um, let me close my output window. And so we had a customer contact us and they said, hey, listen, we love using Ultra Edit to open our huge XML files. And actually we use the XML manager as our frame of reference 
to navigate down through our our file and access certain subnodes or whatever and get you know extract information that we need uh, so you know they'll double click to jump to double click on a node in the XML tree to jump to it in source get what they need um, and then browse through I don't know collecting different information and that sort of thing but they said to us like one thing that's really bothering us is you can see it just happened here is that as we're scrolling down through the file the XML manager is automatically expanding these nodes trying to track you know within the XML tree where it is that we're looking and the problem with that is as you can see here if you get like deep down into some nested nodes um, things start jumping around, you start losing your place in the XML tree. And so they said, you know, this is really undesirable behavior for us. We really rely on Ultra Edit to, uh, you know, we're using the XML manager primarily uh, as our primary navigation. And this, what they didn't realize is that this functionality was actually implemented based upon other requests from our users who are using source as their, you know, main uh, reference for navigation. And they, you know, these users asked us to, for the XML manager to follow along as they browse through source. Well, you know, this customer doing the inverse of that found that functionality very undesirable. And so what we did is we said to our uh, development team, hey, is there any way that we can like add an option for this to improve usability for this particular customer? They said, yeah, absolutely no problem. So we added this handy little option in the context menu to automatically expand nodes. And if you turn that off, then you can scroll down through your XML file without losing your spot over here in the XML manager. And for them, that was a game changer. I know that that's a very small thing and for many people probably doesn't get them too excited, but hey, if you're a person that's dealing with this kind of data on a regular basis, and um, you know you're saving a lot of time opening stuff like this in ultra edit then something small like that can actually wind up being a big deal and really the the reason that we wanted to showcase this uh, is because it's emblematic of our approach when it comes to large files and usability performance speed and really um you know uh re really being attuned to the needs of our customers so I, I wanted to I wanted to uh, encourage anyone who's listening or watching, if you're working with Ultra Edit for large files, and there's something that annoys you or bothers you or you feel could be improved, uh, we welcome that feedback. We want you to email us and tell us about it. You know, there's there's certain things that we do to try to discover new opportunities for large file handlings ourselves, but there's nothing that beats hearing directly from our users, from our customers. So please reach out to us and let us know, uh, you know, what option we can add that would make your life easier. Uh, I can't promise that we'll add it, but in many cases we do, especially as it relates to large files, because as Brad mentioned, that's kind of our bread and butter. So it's very important to us that um, we not only uh, maintain our ground as it relates to large files, but we, um, we continually gain ground in that department as well. And we often will add things very quickly, um, usually within the next release or so to improve performance, um, when, especially when it comes to large files. All right, so that's my pitch for reaching out to us, letting us know what your idea is. I'm gonna hand it back over to Brad. All right, thank you, Ben, uh, for that. Uh, I do want to reiterate uh, what Ben just said. We do welcome any feedback you can give us, uh, and we are definitely open to acting on whatever feedback you can provide. Uh, that's that's how our product gets better. So now I want to talk about what we're going to be doing with large files. Now I know from comments and questions that I've seen just uh, the, that some of you have posted today that. The immediate question when we uh, showcased all of the settings you had to modify to get 
absolute optimal large file handling was why isn't this just uh, like a one click operation or 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 just a few clicks to enable so uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, features we have coming this year for ultra edit is an enhanced large file mode and uh, that will consolidate all these settings and make them easier in fact uh, it should just take a second here i'm going to show that we have this uh, uh, at least as a visible mock-up is that uh, you, we would now have a large file handling uh, item in our configuration and you'd be able to come in here and you'd be able to specify a large file threshold like I've got to set to 50 megabytes right now or approximately 50 megabytes and if you any files over that threshold would enable this new large file mode which below here you can see that you can selectively enable or disable certain features so if you could check all the boxes and that would give you optimal large file performance or you could uncheck some if there's some features you want and this would also have the benefit of any smaller files would still have the full functionality provided by ultra edit they would not be affected at all so all these features that you're disabling would be enabled for regular files, while for your editing of large files, you can have optimal experience editing large files and optimal experience editing small files. So we're, we're targeting that for uh, later this year. Uh, right now it's scheduled for 2023.1. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to this going in and I hope, I hope that, uh, that you are too. Um, I think it'll be a nice addition to Ultra Edit and it makes a lot of sense uh, just, just based on your comments and, and what we've seen today. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we, you know, I want, since we're talking about what's coming for Ultra Edit, I do want to uh, cover some of the items that we're going to be releasing in Ultra Edit this year as well. Uh, you might be interested to just get a little preview of this. I'm going to, I'm going to just uh, talk through these quickly, and then I'm going to show a couple examples of what the, what this will look like, and uh, and, and then we'll uh, we'll wrap it up for your questions. Uh, we're going to be we're going to including what we're calling release channels. And what release channels are is basically gives you access to pre-release or development software. I can show you here that we're going to have. And of course, any UI you see here is preliminary. It can definitely change before release. But what we've got here is a release channel uh, here visible, and you can select development, pre-release, or release. And when you have that selected, if you have release, nothing really changes. You'll get the same software you've always received. Uh, updates will, will, will appear periodically like you would expect. But if you've selected pre-release, then what you'll be receiving is software that's scheduled for release. That's, you know, we, we've tested it. We're, we're ready to release it, but we're wanting to get some additional valuation. We've got it out to some, uh, some of our, some, with our internal testing we will have provided it to customers and uh, it's going through those final stages of testing before it goes to release and if you've selected the pre-release channel you'll be able to receive that software before it goes to release if you've selected development then you'll be opting in for you know what would be more of a preview or technology preview level so this is in development software features may not be complete and they're going to be changing but it'll give you the earliest possible access to new features that are coming to Ultra Edit. And uh, this pre this the release channel feature should be available. Uh, it's currently scheduled for the first release of Ultra Edit this year, which will be uh, um, should be at the end of March or early April. The uh, second item we're going to look at real quick is, uh, or hopefully quickly, is we're enhancing the WebView 2 integration. Uh, last year, we added a new updated WebView for browser view and live preview to Ultra Edit that brings in uh, um, latest web technologies for, for, for viewing and, and, and parsing of, of web content. And I'm going to walk through some of that here. Uh, that's been available since last year, but now we're going to expand on that capability. I'm going to do some cleanup here first so I can get to the files I'm looking for. So our live preview, which you may or may not be familiar with, just it just gives you a side-by-side -side view of web content that you're looking at. And what we've added is we've added on to the web view itself. Like, for instance, let's say you have an HTML file. 
and uh, you're, there's something you want to diagnose in the HTML file, something that is not quite what you like. Well, we now have the ability you can do an, you can do an inspect operation, and that will bring up a DevTools window that's similar to what you'd see in a web browser. And from the DevTools window, you can now go in and diagnose elements of the HTML. You can look at what it has to offer, any content, um, <clears throat> which really means you can drill down into the HTML to look at how it's being parsed and processed in, on the web browser side. We are also, let's say you work with uh, SVG files or basically any content at all. It's not, it does not, it's not SVG specific, but if you've got a file and you've got some content, you can now come in and you can do a capture. You could select a portion of it and then you could copy it, paste another application, and it gives you an easy way to capture content in Ultra Edit. It's not limited to just images, it could be any content at all. You could come in and do a capture on a regular web page, and now you've got uh, uh, an image file, an image on your clipboard that you can paste somewhere else. So it gives you an easy way to preview your content, your files in a browser, grab an image, paste that somewhere, and move on to something else. And finally, the last thing is, if you're doing a live preview, like for our, like if you're doing um, uh, any type of content, you, let's say you've got this and you'd like to send it to someone and you don't want to send them raw markdown or raw HTML, you could right click and select print. And you could print the PDF, specify a location. And now you've just saved this content as a PDF that you could send to somebody else. And it gives you an easy way to bring up uh, uh, you know, arbitrary content, view it in a browser, save it as a PDF, and then distribute it all while you're editing on the file in Ultra Edit. Okay, now I need to move back over to Okay, those are the two features we're going to preview here real quick. We do have more things coming. We have an integrated PowerShell terminal coming. Uh, this will take, basically take a PowerShell window and add it as a dockable window to Ultra Edit so that you can run PowerShell commands, commands there. You can direct output from the PowerShell window into Ultra Edit documents. You can run PowerShell scripts from Ultra Edit with output going into the PowerShell window. Uh, we think that's going to be a great addition to Ultra Edit. Um, and, uh, and it's really going to be the foundation for what we can expand on with integration uh, with other possible terminals, whether that's possibly a command window, maybe a bash terminal window, if users uh, see a use for that, or a even a, a, a git shell window. We can all embed that in Ultra Edit, and this is going to lay the groundwork for that. Uh, we're also looking at an updated scripting engine that's going to go into the first release of Ultra Edit. This is going to bring modern JavaScript to our scripting environment. Uh, which and, and update it so that we can uh, keep pace with modern JavaScript. Ultra Edit's engine uh, uh, will benefit from that. It'll also give you access to um, other other JavaScript features so that you can pull in content. Like so you, you'll have online access. You can pull content into your JavaScript and process those in Ultra Edit. Uh, we also have Pardon me, excuse me. We also have a macro UI update coming with, and that's going to be in the next release of Ultra Edit that will allow you to uh, have a smoother process of working your way through macros. The interface has not been updated in some time, so there's going to be just a new UI update for editing and uh, uh, modifying, creating macros. And finally, we're going to be adding a plugin feature later this year to Ultra Edit so that you can create content for Ultra Edit. You can create uh, plugins that will be able to access Ultra Edit features and capabilities, be able to display in our UI, um, really be able to expand the feature set of Ultra Edit from, from the user's perspective and also allow us to add new features uh, in an easier, quicker fashion because we can create plugins to add to the application and our users can create plugins to add to the application. So I think that uh, 
brings us to everything we had there. Ben, anything you want to add to any of that? No, thank you, Brad. Um, some really exciting stuff coming up. Um, I think, guys, for those of you who are on the webinar, even if you're not and you're watching later, uh, there's some really cool stuff coming ahead for Ultra Edit. So just stay tuned. Uh, we've got some really great uh, things on the product roadmap. We were just looking at it the other day. Very ambitious, but we've got a great team that is capable of great things. So we're really excited about that. I do want to return to some questions. There were quite a few questions about the temp file setting, and I realized that we didn't we didn't we didn't go over or flesh that out completely. So uh, yes, to the to the individuals that asked about temporary files, if you open a file without a temporary file, then the modifications and Brad, correct me if I'm wrong here, but the modifications that you make are held in memory until there's a certain buffer. Uh, or threshold that's reached, and then those modifications are dumped or written, I shouldn't say dumped, but they're written directly to the file on disk. So you should consider uh, the fact that when you open a huge file without a temporary file, um, you are you just pretty much treat it as though you're directly, you're modifying the file directly on disk. Now, undo will still work, in that large file. I've tested it with a huge replace before this webinar. I tested undo with a huge replace and it worked um, in my 780 or whatever, 680 megabyte XML file. So there are ways to undo things if you do something you didn't mean to do. But someone asked, what if I'm in the middle of, of editing a large file and I don't have temporary files disabled or, or enabled and my computer crashes? Um, are those edits that I made, are they permanent? they would be permanent assuming that you hit that internal uh buffer that wrote the modifications out to the file on disk so it's always safest to assume that when you're editing large files without temp files um the modifications are directly to the file now that said a couple years back or maybe it was even more than that we made some optimizations uh for editing large files without temporary files so when you edit without temporary file, or I'm sorry, editing with temporary files. So when you edit with a temporary file, which is normal behavior, any file that you open in Ultra Edit underneath the threshold is going to be open that way. Um, we, we made it to where the creation of that temporary file is a lot faster, a lot smoother, a lot cleaner. So there's less of a delay when you're opening that huge file. There still is a delay because Ultra Edit has to make a copy of that file in its temporary location so those are all considerations you know you manage the level of risk that you're able to tolerate or are com comfortable with when it comes to this yeah um, I do, go ahead brad i was to say that i do want to add that uh, the the features are enhanced large file mode that we're looking at later this year one of the uh, uh, features and goals of that will be that it will kind of separate the temp file setting from the overall large file mode so that let's say you want temp files because you want that that additional security you know kind of backstopping what you're editing there then you could configure it so that the large file mode activates but you still use temp files but it disables everything else that you've marked off in settings so that you get better performance but still have a temp file now of course this this would you have to balance this yourself as a user if you have a terabyte file you probably wouldn't want to do that but if you have like uh as uh, ben you had a 700 megabyte file you might be just fine leaving temp files enabled for it because you could create a temp file relatively quickly but still want those other settings disabled automatically because it's a large file to get better performance so we're trying to balance that out so that users can pick and choose how they want their large file handling to work. So that's that's those settings will help bring that. Yep. Yep. And uh, that is I, I saw some questions regarding that. Someone mentioned, hey, I don't have large files in my settings. Uh, it just says file handling or or temporary files. I mean, um, that was an internal build of Ultra Edit, um, a development build. We aren't ready for that to go to beta or even alpha yet. So that was more of a preview. You will not see the large files section of configuration um, for probably at least a few months. Um, someone asked if we'll be sharing the scripts that you use, Brad. I believe those are available for download on our site. If you go to our website, ultraedit.com, 
and then hover over the products tab in the menu, you should see additional resources or actually it says extra downloads at the bottom of that menu, word files, themes, macros, and scripts. You want to click on macros and scripts and you'll see a list of all of all those um, as well as descriptions of what they do. Yeah, I, I know that one of those scripts is directly from that list. Uh, it, it's actually part of our one of our power tips as well. Uh, the second script will make sure that, that it makes it onto the available scripts for users. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll make sure that happens uh, uh, you know, shortly after this uh, webinar. Yep. Uh, Tom had asked a few questions about opening Excel files or PDF files. Ultra Edit is a plain text editor. That means that it won't open um, files that are formatted like Excel or uh, PDF files. Uh, basically, if the file isn't in plain text format, then you're not going to see what you expect when you open it. It will certainly open the file, but you're going to see the raw binary contents of the file. Most likely, it'll open in hex mode. Um, David asked, can we specify the temp file driver that directory so that we can utilize RAM disk? I, Brad, I don't know if you remember this, but I thought we had a an INI setting that allowed us to do that. Is that accurate? Uh, yeah, I, okay, it's coming back to me now. There's a an INI setting that you can manually set. We have not exposed this in the settings because we, we did not see a, a big enough demand to add it as a setting, but for a couple of users, it was very important. So, um, David, what I would encourage you to do is check our wiki uh, and search for INI settings, hidden INI settings. Um, well, they're not really hidden, they're just unexposed. Uh, and then that setting, you'll see documentation regarding it, as well as a few others that you may be interested in. Um, yeah, and that might be a good candidate to uh, make available in our new large file mode. So we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll consider that. About, yep. Uh, all right. Someone asked if we lose performance when we enter column mode um, in the editor. So I just tried this while Brad was presenting. Um, I opened my XML file again, 680 megabytes, 23-ish million lines. And I toggled column mode and I created a columnar selection using control shift end all the way to the end of the file. And it was just as fast as if I were in a 10 line file. So there, there, as far as I know, in terms of selecting navigation, that sort of thing, um, there is no performance loss with column mode. Now, if I start editing and I start inserting characters on every single line in a column, uh, that is not something that I've tried. I, I would expect to see some slight delays there. Bob asked when he opens large files, he sees the pop-up asking if it's okay to disable temporary files. He wanted to know what he loses by disabling temporary files. I think we explained that previously, uh, but just to reiterate, you would need to consider that all of your changes to the file are permanent. And I, I get, I get, you know, I think we should probably start clarifying sometimes, maybe some documentation that it's that you should assume, even though as you said, we have a buffer where they're not, they actually aren't immediate. You should assume that when you edit a file with large files, temp files and uh, disabled, you should just assume that your edits are immediately permanent. Right. <laughs> Yep. But for, safe, for safety's consideration, you should assume they are immediately permanent. Yes, you can use undo, and yes, undo will work. But because if you start navigating or you do some other operation, suddenly those edits will go out of the buffer and written to file, and there's not there's not a good warning for that. So you should just assume they're always written out immediately. Yep. Uh, we got some questions about Mac and Linux. Um, these the the demonstrations that you saw here, they should work uh, pretty much the same on Mac and Linux. The settings may be in a little bit different location, but in general, the same large file handling optimizations are available on Mac and Linux. Um, so you shouldn't see much, if any, difference in performance there. And I can say that the enhanced large file mode that we've that I presented as for future release will be in the 
next releases of the Mac and Linux versions. Yeah, so that will, was a question that we received as well. Yeah, it will be in there, and that will be later this year. Should be uh, uh, within a short time frame of the Windows release. Brad, we got a question about Ultra Edit utilizing the power of the M1 CPU on Mac, M1, M2. Um, we were just talking about this earlier today. What can you tell us about that? Uh, well, I can tell you, we, we do have an internal build that runs on the M1 and M2 on Mac. Um, it is undergoing testing and uh, and we're, of course, addressing issues as we find them. But we do have that build and it is something we are actively working on. And we would like that to go out uh, within the same time frame as the uh, first release of Ultra Edit, which, as I said, will be, I think I said earlier in the, pre in the presentation, was uh, toward the end of March or early part of April is when we're currently targeting for the next Windows release of Ultra Edit. And we would like the Mac version to go out in that same time frame. And it would be, it would include M1, M, a, a specific M1, M2 build. Thanks, Brad. Uh, some other questions here. Um, we got a question about these webinars. How can how can we make sure that we're notified about these webinars? Um, if you are a customer, then you should be receiving notifications about the webinars unless you've unsubscribed from our mailing list. But we also put notifications on our social media outlets, when our uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter. Um, I think Facebook and Twitter is probably it. Um, and then there's a notification on our website as well. Uh, we are looking at separating out our mailing list so that if you just want to be notified of webinars and you don't want to be receiving other marketing content, you'll be able to do that. That hasn't happened yet, but we're working with our working with our marketing ops team on that. Um, and then if you have coworkers who you feel would benefit from these webinars, really the best thing to do is forward the email to them. You could ask them to sign up, you know, for for our emails as well. I believe there's a sign up on our website. Uh, let's see here. What about XML scheme validation? So that doesn't really relate to large files, but I can tell you that um, we do offer XML schema validation in our XML Lint tool. Uh, that is in the coding tab under the XML dropdown. Um, there's a run XML Lint option. And actually, we have a short video on our YouTube uh, channel about using or editing um, XML files in Ultra Edit. And one of the items that's covered there is how to validate against an uh, external schema. All right, some really great ideas, feature requests here. Guys, I, I really would encourage you to just copy paste those into an email. We'll try to hang on to these and get them over to our support team to log tickets, but an email really, really goes a long way. Is there an option for line checksums? I'd like to see, I'm trying to understand this question. Oh, okay. So someone's asking about checksums, I think. Mm, per line, but maybe on the entire file. So we have checksums available in um, the file properties window. So if you have the file open, then you can go to, let's see here, it's in the layout tab. You'll want to select file properties. And this opens a dockable window that contains a bunch of statistics about the active file. Uh, and I believe it's in here that we have the hash. Yeah, the check, there's a, under the content section, there's a checksums uh, property and with a calculate, a link that says calculate. So if you click on that, well, I'm sorry, it, it, it will open, I believe it will open a dialog with the checksums. Um, I think it's saying calculate for me because I have a large file open. But if you click on that, it's going to show you MD5, CRC, SHA-1, SHA-256. So you can check uh, files, uh, checksums that way. Uh, someone asked about an HP nonstop, if they can open large files from an HP nonstop server. I'm assuming that you're either using 
FTP to pull those files down or you're opening over a network, uh, like a mapped network drive or a UNC network path. I'm not that familiar with HP nonstop. If you are opening a file over FTP, uh, then it's going to have to download the entire file. There's just no way around it. So that could be a time con time consuming process. We had a couple questions about running a macro in the same way that you would uh, run replacing files. Um, Brad, maybe you can answer that one as I continue browsing questions here. We're getting ready to wrap up. Uh, well, it would, I mean, you can you can invoke replacing files from a macro. Um, I'm, I guess I would need more context on the question. I, I think they're wanting to run a macro on a large file without actually having to open the file. Ah, okay. Um, that sounds like a feature request to me. I, I don't know of a way to. Um, okay, well you I could you, you could invoke you okay you could uh, you, you you could invoke replacing files with the macro because you can you can do that. Um, but it would be it would be a little different. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd have to look at that. Actually, look at. I have to look at the macro syntax and try to put something together and test that out. We do allow you to invoke finding files, and replacing files from macro. Right, right. But you can't. Yeah. Right now, it's not possible to run the macro or the script externally out without opening the application and the file that right. you're running on. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. Tom says that he couldn't he could not get his um team to sign up tom i'm going to work with our marketing team on how to make this more straightforward i apologize for the difficulty there uh we will reach out to you after the webinar to get that short up uh a coworker actually just reminded me um that you can hash not just the entire file but also your selection so if you wanted to get a hash of just a line you could select the line and then calculate the hash just on that uh, from the file properties window. Oh, let's see here. Brad, I'm gonna I'm just gonna read this and I'm gonna let you try to answer it. I'm not I haven't actually digested what it says yet. Could I employ a script to set select UE settings prior to invoking Ultra Edit to edit a file? So I'd have one menu selection for editing source code and another for editing large files. Would that lead to psychotic behavior once the files are open in Ultra Edit? Uh, I think what they're saying is that can can they basically customize their menus based upon the size of file that's open? That's what it right. sounds. Right. I mean, it is possible to run multiple instances of ultra edit with different configuration files uh maybe <laughs> i don't know that we've ever actually tested that specific scenario but we we you we support multiple instances we support individual configuration files and you should be able to launch with different configurations so right now you could potentially achieve that but i i think uh, a better solution will be what we're what we're working on which is to allow large file mode to not affect small file mode if you will um but uh, that that is that is an interesting idea that you could do that yes i, I believe we support that but uh, it would or i shouldn't say we support it. i say i think it's possible but it's not something we ever actually envisioned running multiple instances with multiple configurations Yes, I uh, always appreciate appreciate the creativity and the unique needs of our users. I mean, seriously, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that in a sarcastic way. Um, I'm always no, not, not, not at all. Our, our, our users have historically done a great job of actually showing us ways we didn't think of to use our app that are very often even better than what we would have imagined. So absolutely, absolutely uh, respect that. Yep, totally. All right. I think we've gotten through most of the questions here and we are coming up on an hour. So um, at this point, I think we'll wrap things up. Uh, on behalf of Brad and myself, I just want to say thank you again to everyone for your time, for your feedback. Um, we really enjoy doing these webinars and hearing from you. So like I said, 
Um, if you have any questions that weren't answered or ideas for the product, ways that we can improve, um, please email us support at ultraedit.com. Again, that's support at ultraedit.com, and we will res we respond to every email we receive. Uh, so we'll we'll be looking for those emails. Um, we will have a recording of the full webinar available, and that will be disseminated via email. Um, if you signed up with your email, then expect to receive uh, a follow-up with a link to the full recording, and you're more than welcome to share that with your friends, coworkers, whomever. Share it with your boss and convince them that he needs to buy your entire department a <laughs> license for Ultra Edit. Um, but we will also look at making our webinar sign-up process easier notifications, more prominent, that sort of thing as well. So thanks for the feedback there, everyone. All right, with that said, Brad, do you have anything else you wanted to add? No, I just want to thank everyone who uh, who came today and uh, uh, work, you know, sat here with us through this webinar. Uh, we definitely are always looking for our users to communicate with us. So please come back for more webinars. Let us know what, we, what we're doing well. Let us know what we're not doing well, and we'll make it better. That's right. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for your time, and we'll see you on the next one. Have a good day, everyone.